Barry Bowles. I'm from Truro, Nova Scotia. I am a black Nova Scotian. I'm a member of the DGC, the Directors Guild of Canada. I'm a member of ACTRA. I'm a member of Equity. SOCAN and the American Federation of Musicians. I'm a unionized dancer. Working in the university system. And I would be in the writers' union, but I'm just can't pay any more dues. So I create culture and I produce culture. I produce the stories of my communities and every single person that's standing here today is part of our culture. That's what we do. We produce culture. I will not, and I, I ask everyone who joins, I will not let our government decide that we are nothing more than a consumer industry. We are a complex contribution to the values, vitality, and beliefs of our communities and our generations. We are culture. Every story from every rural community, to the cities, to our immigrants, to our sexual identities, to our social classes, to our indigenous, our aboriginal, these are our stories and we are the gatherers of that, we distribute that and we spread that for the world to see. It has been there for traditions and will always continue long after those people in the building are gone. drive and our culture. Our industry is made of a complex group of individuals that are highly educated, highly skilled, diverse, and very, very, very dynamic. Yes, we will adapt, but we may adapt in ways you don't like. Because we can do that. But you don't want that. You want to keep us here. You want to keep our veterans here to train our youth. You want to keep our youth here to keep our stories moving, adapting, and changing. That's why we're here. We work here because we are culture. And shame, shame on the liberal government for turning their back on an industry they swore to promote, swore to keep. are made and I'd also like to say a big thank you to the other groups that have come out to support us today and I want everyone that's here in our industry to just recognize now that there are people standing with us today that last week may have been standing alone somewhere and I want you to look at the power we have right now, the resources that we are able to do, the creative ways that we can assemble and think about as well the things that we can turn back to those groups. Think about how we can open our doors to them, how we can also assemble with those people that are compassionate for, with us today and that are here supporting us today. Let's unify all of these groups. stories as well and I'm trying to get these stories out to the world stories from Halifax Nova Scotia I I wanted to begin a little bit with my my own story and how I got to be who I am standing here in front of you 20 years ago I graduated from the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design <laughs> most of the people I graduated with decided not to stick around. I was one of a small handful. 
At the time, the film industry was just starting to blossom, and I dove right in. I took advantage of it. NASCAD didn't have film, film production at the time, and my film school was this industry right here. There are people down there who helped teach me become who I am today. I, uh, and I'm incredibly grateful for that. I started out as a camera assistant. I worked several years in the camera union, and then eventually I started making my own films. These films started out as short films, music videos. They got longer and longer, and eventually I made feature films. I've made three feature films, documentaries. Recently, I've gotten into animation. I do animation uh, on my own and through the National Film Board. These are all skills that I've learned here in Nova Scotia from this incredibly rich and talented pool of collaborators that I've been able to surround myself by. We have a world-class industry here, and I'm a testament to this. I make films that get out to the planet. I have traveled the world, my films have traveled the world. I've reached people in places as far off as China, Russia, Australia. I recently became pen pals with a young woman from the Maldives. She loved my films, she saw them online, and uh, eventually we started exchanging emails and she told me that she wanted to become an oceanographer. So we started talking, she wanted to come to, to North America, and now she's actually considering coming to Dalhousie University, which she had no idea even existed. So <laughs> this is just the amazing power of how our stories can get out to the far-reaching corners of the world and bring people here. I just want to to end off talking a little bit about the Dark Ages. Um, bear with me. I, uh, if any of you know, the Dark Ages are a time between the fall of the Roman Empire and the Renaissance. And they're marked because of the lack of culture during that time. People had other things to worry about, like plagues and the barbarians. But the consequence is that stories weren't getting out to the world, and therefore that era was dark. I fear that we're about to enter a dark age here in Nova Scotia. I, I, go, I talk to a lot of students, and uh, I teach at NASCAD every once in a while. And, and one of the things they always come to me is they say, how do you do it? You're a filmmaker, you can support yourself, how do you do it? And I always tell them, stay here. Stay in Nova Scotia. This is a really supportive, creative community. You'll find work, I did. I don't know if I can say that without the support of the tax credit. It's what kept me here. I don't know if I can tell them. But I want their stories, I wanna hear their stories. I wanna hear Corey's story. I think we owe it to them to create a future in this province. Thank you. Yeah.